questions at the end? I'm going to block time. Yeah. Okay. They're going to move us. We're, not, we're probably not going to have time for a lot of questions, so we'll, you can catch Mark or anybody else outside session, I guess. Can I get the next presentation up? So I'm going to switch to our very preclinical work on gene therapy. Um, but I do want to announce that a company that I've been working with for a couple of years now, Dimension Therapeutics in Boston, has publicly announced about a month ago that they're committed to trying to move gene therapy into the clinic in PKU, but it's all very, very early, but they have at least publicly committed to doing this. Um, and I'm not the only one in the world that's worked on this, so I'm leaving out tons of data, and this has been going on for 25, 30 years. Um, uh, so I want to just give a little bit of a background very quickly. So there's basically two ways that we've conceived of doing gene therapy for PKU. You can either add in a normal phenylalanine hydroxylase gene, the liver being the best target, or as you learned about yesterday with how to make the pig, the CRISPR-Cas9 system is actually going in and, and, and potentially can change the DNA in the animal or the person, um, and we're trying to exploit that as well. When, when we say put the gene in, the genes are actually very huge things, and they're broke up into tiny little pieces, and we really can't put that normal thing into the liver, so we compress it all into a mini gene, if you will, and so that's actually what goes into the patient or the organism. And it's been, uh, um, what is it, 25 years now since Ashante Da Silva is the very first person who ever got treated for a genetic disease with gene therapy. She was, this was done back in 19, actually 1990, uh, is when she got her first treatment. So there's been quite a experience since then. And I'm gonna skip all that whole 25 years and just tell you where we're at now. Um, and what most, the, the favorite thing of the week is um, to do adeno-associated virus, which is a virus that does not make us sick. Um, and we have basically adapted that. We, this, the, the virus has a very, very tiny set of genes, and we cut the, most of the virus out, and we stick the gene that we want into that genome, and the only pieces that are left from the virus are the little tiny, th little curly cues on the ends, um, and then we package that piece of DNA in the viral particle, so that's basically a protein coat on its outside, and we inject it into the, uh, into the animal. And the, the flavor of the virus that we have used in the PKU mice has been in clinical trials now for about eight years in adults with hemophilia. And so this was a publication back from 2011 now. So this is a clotting disorder, which is also a missing uh, liver protein. And they've done 10 patients with this. They've got a single IV injection. I've had absolutely no side effects from this at all. There's been no symptoms or anything. Um, a little bit of liver inflammation that we're still trying to figure out, but um, it didn't, it went away, and they've ended up with stable production of the clotting factor, and all 10 of these patients have essentially been able to not have any more bleeding episodes and have stopped having to give themselves infusions of the clotting protein, which they were doing up sometimes daily in some individuals. Um, so that is pretty dramatic. Um, this is just one patient who the yellow line is the amount of clotting factor, which starts out it was zero at the beginning, but then after the gene therapy is very high and then drops um, down and ultimately stabilizes, and that's enough to cure hemophilia. The big question is whether or not that will be enough to cure uh, PKU. We have done similar experiments in the PKU mice, so it's basically exactly the same thing. In fact, it's exactly the same sequences that have gone into the he uh, hemophilia patients, except instead of the clotting factor gene, it's the PAH gene. Um, and if we inject that into PKU mice, that's what happens to their blood phenylalanine levels. Uh, if we get about 10% of the liver to be expressing the enzyme, and it's, th this is a picture of the mice. Um, the one on the left is untreated, so they're kind of tan because the phenylalanine actually inhibits their production of pigment. The other three have been treated and their blood fees have dropped and they turn black. So you don't even need to measure their blood fee. You can tell who's been treated in the cured in the cage by just what happens to their coat color. 
Um, you can, this is a project we did in collaboration with a group from Switzerland that I worked with for a long time. You don't even have to put it in a vein, you can just do an intramuscular injection, the virus goes to the liver and lowers the blood fee, but it is dose dependent, and that's what we're going to have to figure out in humans is how much of a dose that do we need to, you know, do we need to, to do. So there are several ongoing liver-directed gene therapy trials with this version of AAV and others. BioMarin also has a gene therapy arm. They have a hemophilia trial um, that looks extremely promising, uh, even better than the one that I've already showed you. Um, and then these are some of the planned ones, including PKU. And the way I'm involved in this is that I'm the lead PI for dimension on the OTC gene therapy trial. Why that first? Because that disease is very severe. A lot of patients die even with their uh, dietary therapy, and we think it's worth taking more risks there than with relatively healthy adults with PKU. But if that all goes as planned, then we'll move from there to uh, PKU. I'm not going to predict the timeline. Um, this is our holy grail something that's safe but gives us enough cells in the liver to make enzyme to get the fee levels down. Um, we have some concern that this might not be absolutely permanent because the virus doesn't actually insert itself into the liver genome. It hangs out as a separate little piece of DNA. The cell divides, it goes away. Um, so the other thing that people are working on is something that can be given over and over again in case you need a little booster. That leads me to one slide on gene editing. So we, NPKOE very generously gave us some money to start developing this. So this is a different approach. Instead of adding the gene, we're gonna correct the mutation in the PKU gene, in the PAH gene. Um, and I'm not gonna go into me detailed mechanisms and I have no data because we're still generating the reagents. But theoretically, what will work is if we are gonna package this machinery in that same virus that I just talked about and we'll deliver it to the liver, and instead of just adding a copy of the gene, the machinery will go in and actually change the mutation in the patient back to normal. So that's the, and should be permanent then, even if that liver cell divides, because the cell will copy that corrected gene. So that's the, the goal of the CRISPR um, uh, uh, technology. There are side effects, though, and that's probably our biggest issue is that making this cut where you want it to cut, but keeping it from cutting in other places that might not be such a good place to get cuts. So people are working very hard on that technology. Um, this, what we're doing now, I'm sure will not go into humans because of that issue, but there will be versions of this that I'm confident will, will work. And obviously, I uh, don't do this alone. I have a ton of collaborators and people in my lab, and then the funding obviously is very critical, including two grants now that I've gotten from the NPKUA, so I thank you very much for that. Thank you.